Welcome to Living the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So we'll simply continue where we stopped. We said that association is key to prosperity. Association is key to prosperity. No matter what you're doing, so long as you're in this planet Earth, you have to associate with people. You have to associate with things. We are going to examine what God expects us to associate with. Of course, there are principally four things that you associate with in this planet Earth. The first is God expects you to associate with his word. God expects us to associate with his word. Of course, by associating with his word, you are associating with him. Because God and his word are one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh. So God and his word, they are one. One of the main reasons why you are created is for you to fellowship with him. Apart from the fact that God had given you dominion over the works of his hands, that means your primary responsibility is to manage the resources that he had made available here on planet Earth. The next major reason why you are here is to fellowship with him. Because God is love, and love cannot stand alone. Love needs an object. And after the fall of man, God gave his only begotten son, for he so loved the world. So love needs an object for love to function properly. So we are the object of his love. So God expects us to love him as he loves us. The first thing that God expects us to associate with is with his word. Then number two, God expects us to associate with godly people. God expects us to associate with godly people. And to disassociate with ungodly people, namely the wicked, sinners, and discomfort. The third thing that we associate with, there are things we associate with things like money, power, pleasure, fame. Those are things. Property. Then the fourth. We associate with the realm of the spirit. So our association with these four things will bring about either our success in life or our failure. So that's why it's important we know how we associate. And the Lego tender mostly for this association is uh, communication. You use words in communicating. So if you are associating with the Word of God, 
your communion with his word. The legal tender that you use is his word. If you're dealing with godly people or ungodly people, the legal tender that you use is still words. Even when you're dealing with things, they also still speak to you. They have voice. When Eve looked at that fruit after the suggestion of the devil, the tree spoke to her. For the first time, she saw that the fruit was really desirable and beautiful. So things also speak. When you see a mountain, the mountain speaks to you. The first thing that will occur to you is that I will not be able to ordinarily cross this mountain. Am I right? When you see a river or an ocean, fear will grip your heart because the ocean is speaking to you that you cannot just enter me anyhow. You must be equipped for you to deal with me. So things also speak. They communicate. Then of course in the realm of the spirit, we are told that you have angelic hosts. A third of them are fallen. You have wicked spirits. You have principalities and powers. Of course, in the same realm of the spirit, that's where the occults and secret society operate. Then you have religious denominations. All these are spiritual associations. Why am I taking time to break this into categories so that we'll be able to deal with it appropriately? Because to a very great extent, your success in life depends on the association that you keep. So let's look at the first aspect, the Word of God. God expects his children to associate with his word how often? Day and night. He told Joshua that this book of the law shall not depart from thy eyes, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night so that you can observe to do everything that is written in the book. He said when you do, you will make your way prosperous and you're going to have good success. So if there is good success, there is also bad success. The success that the devil gives to you is temporary and is bad. But the one that comes from God is permanent. He has no sorrows to it. says, this book of the law shall not depart from thy eyes, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. So God expects his children to associate with his word day and night. And the psalmist said, early in the morning will I rise up and worship you. Early in the morning will I praise you early in the morning will I bring my request to you so God expects his children to associate with his word on daily basis 
said he should bind this thing round your neck. Look at it on daily basis. Speak these words to your children. Communicate it to them. And that's why he said, train up a child the way he or she should go. When he grows, he will not depart from it. So God expects his children to communicate his word to their offspring. So if you want to succeed in life, you must cultivate the habit of associating with the word of God. Because that is the only way you can learn godliness. In Proverbs, Solomon told his kids, the purpose of the book of Proverbs. So let's quickly look at it so that you will begin to see the importance of relating with the word of God. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. I will begin to read from verse 1. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. The purpose of these Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and discipline and to help them understand wise sayings. Verse 3. Through these Proverbs, people will receive instruction in discipline, good conduct, and doing what is right, just, and fair. These uh, Proverbs will make the simple-minded clever. They will give knowledge and purpose to young people. Have you seen it? So the purpose of the word of God to give you instruction and discipline, help you so that you can conduct yourself properly, good conduct, help you in doing what is right, just, and fair, and also help you to be clever. Have you seen the purpose of associating or the benefit that you gain when you associate with the word of God? That's one aspect. Then when you go to Psalm 1, we will see another benefit of associating with the word of God. It says there that when you delight in doing everything that the Lord wants by meditating on his words day and night that you will be like a tree that is planted along the river bank bearing fruit each season without fail. He says their leaves never wither and in all they do they prosper. Have you seen it? So when you cultivate the habit of relating with the word of God day and night, everything that you set out your hands to do will succeed. That's what he's saying there. You will receive instruction in discipline. You will also receive instructions as to how to conduct your affairs. You will be able to know what is right and what is wrong, and you will be able to be just and fair in all your dealings. So that's it. Then the second aspect of association is relating with godly people. When you associate with godly people,
you will also prosper. Because you will learn the fear of God, nuggets of wisdom that will help you, and godly advice that will sustain you. A typical example was David. After he was anointed king by Samuel, he entered into the service of Saul. You all know the story. But along the line, after he killed Goliath and the women started singing the song that Saul slew his uh, hundred, but David slew his thousands, he became jealous. He got mad that David wanted to kill him. David had to run for his life. You know, women, they have a way of putting you into trouble. If they had kept their mouth shut, I don't think David could have run into trouble. But that song <laughs> got David into trouble. And he had to leave, run into the desert place, for his life. But if you read First Samuel chapter 22 starting from verse 1 especially verse 2 the company that David had about 400 of them <laughs> were disgruntled people people that were in debt in summary, he had a bunch of hooligans that joined him. So David started his rulership, he started his ministry with nobodies. Can we read it? Because some of you are looking at me as though reading my own Bible. First Samuel chapter 22 it says in verse 1 so David left God and escaped to the cave of Adullam soon his brothers and other relatives joined him there verse 2 then others began coming men who were in trouble <laughs> is that in your Bible? Men who were what? Or in debt, or who were just discontented until David was the leader of about 400 men. Can you imagine leading this kind of people? <laughs> people that had his grunt. <laughs> 400 men. But if you refer to David, about seven years later, David had transformed this man into mighty men of valor. They were leaders, captains in his army. They were now very responsible people, wealthy. Because if you remember, when David decided that he was going to build the temple and God said, no, your hand has touched so much blood, he said, fine, even when I'm not going to build, let me assemble the material. The gifts that came from this is a lieutenant, they were enormous, showing that they were not paupers. But they started at paupers, but because of David's godly leadership, he was able to bring up these men and they became useful citizens. So association with godly people will always connect you to your destiny. I'm not saying that your success in life depends on the whims and caprices of any human being. Your success in life depends on God's perfect will for your life and you aligning yourself to his perfect will for your life. Because he said, if you are willing and obedient that you're going to eat the good of the land. 
But association can get you faster to where you're going than any other thing that you can think of. Are you following? Especially if that association is a godly association. What of a marriage? There is a saying in our place that any woman that is good for you for friendship, make sure that that woman is also good for marriage. Do you know what that adage means? It's simply telling you to be careful the kind of a woman you associate with because if you are not careful, it will lead to what? To marriage. You came in for a quick one. You know that the lady has a questionable character, but you thought that you're smart. Before you say Jack, she will get you where she wants you and you end up marrying her. And from that day, you enter purgatory. You start dying bit by bit until finally you're destroyed. What am I saying? The kind of people you associate with. It can also happen to a woman, the kind of man you associate with. You might think you're smart. Let me just get his money. You might end up marrying the most mean human being on earth. But you started out simply trying to get something out of the relationship until you end up getting deeper and deeper. And in the process, your destiny will get entangled with something that you cannot finish. And that's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, we are told that evil association corrupts what? Good character. No matter how good you are, when you begin to associate with ungodly people, you're bound to run into problems. Some of you are doubting me. Let's see what happened to the wisest man that ever lived on planet Earth. First Kings chapter 11. First King, chapter 11. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women. Is that in your Bible? We are not talking about foreign women as we have them today. We are talking about foreign women that God forbid them from associating with the children of Israel because they were pagans and demon worshippers. So now King Solomon loved not just foreign women, many of them. Besides Pharaoh's daughter, he married women from Moab, Ammon, Edom, Sedom, and from among the Hittites. Verse 2. The Lord had clearly instructed his people not to intermarry with those nations because the women they married would lead them to worship their gods, that's to worship idols. Yet, Solomon insisted on loving them anyway. Verse 3. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And sure enough, they led his heart away from the Lord. In Solomon's old age, they turned his heart to worship their gods instead of trusting only in the Lord his God 
as his father David had done. Is that in your Bible? What turned Solomon's heart from the Lord is God? Foreign women. Have you seen it? But let's not use the word foreign women so that you modern people wouldn't get into trouble. What turned Solomon's heart from the Lord is God? Association. Association with the wrong type of people got Solomon into trouble. Are you following? The third aspect, what we associate with, things, money. Too many times we describe people as having money. But indeed, money is having them. Because anything that you cannot control, that thing is your master. And there are a lot of rich people that money is having. Because money is controlling them. They have forgotten how they got wealthy. That it is the Lord our God that gives us the power to become wealthy. So for so many, it's their money, their wealth that they associate with. For many others, it's their career. Others, it's pleasure. Many others, fame. Celebrities. All they think about, all they care about, is that fame. And we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, that the love of money had destroyed many. Money in itself is not evil, but the love of it is where the problem is. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It says, for the love of money is at the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Is that in your Bible? So you can remove money there, you can put pleasure, you can put career, you can put uh, power, you can put fame. So let's use any one of them that you choose. For the love of fame is at the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving fame have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Is it true? I know you know of some ministers of the gospel in the quest. For them to be known, they go to the occult, they go to native doctors to go and acquire power. So by so doing, they associate with things that God had forbidden his children to associate with. And at the end of the day, to bring sorrow to them. Always remember that the power to become wealthy, the power to become successful in life comes from God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Always remember that the power that you need to succeed in life comes only from God. I'm talking about true success. And that's why we are told in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of sound mind. So the first 
gift that God gave to his children is the spirit of power. Well, I've told you before, you will not be able to operate in that power until you learn compassion, until you learn how to love. Because it takes love to unlock the power of God. Jesus Christ had compassion on them and he healed them all. So he was able to heal them all because of the compassion that he had on them. So compassion, love, is what unlocks the power of God for a child of God. I don't know of other people. Then, of course, the fourth aspect is the realm of the spirit. We associate with the realm of the spirit. When Saul ran into difficulty, when he was having serious trouble, he had to consult with the mediums to find out what to do. Because remember, he had lost favor with Samuel. So now he was in trouble. He had to go and consult the native doctors. And that association cost him so much. Because no sooner that he did that, he was killed. Many people in the quest of trying to belong end up entering the secret society, the occult. For some, the quest for power. For many others, to achieve success in life. They get involved in all kinds of spiritual maneuvers. Today we have a lot of religious denominations that people associate themselves with. And at the end of the day, it robs them of their destiny. So for the fear of death, we are told, Many had put their hands into evil. Because when you join secret societies, the occult, God declares it an evil act. And for fear of death, a lot of people have gone into the occult, all to protect their life. But guess what? They still die anyhow. So wisdom demands that because you're on planet Earth and you must have to associate, associate with godly people and associate with the word of God. And that's why we're told in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says that God knows that we have need of all these things. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said that all these other things will be added unto you. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness simply means associate. Make it your priority to associate with the word of God. That when you do every other thing will fall in place. That's what he's saying. So association is the key to success. Association to a very great extent will determine whether you prosper or you fail in life. Can we all stand? Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, 
Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gerki Abuja. God bless you.